Hey, boys and girls, just washing my hands for it seems like the millionth time today. Now, today our show's gonna look a little different, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. So meet me on the other side of the intro, and let's get going. As I said before the intro, we have a special show for you today. Today we're going to interview a very good friend of mine who knows a lot about this product. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Professor Disruptor. Thank you, Dr. C. This is quite the setup you have. Who do I talk to about getting my own show? The How to Disrupt Everything show with Professor D. Okay, let's discuss this new small lithium ion rechargeable battery. Now that's a mouthful. It sure is. That's why Nichicon calls it the SLB. Well, the first question we all need answered is, what is the difference between the SLB, the lithium ion batteries, and even EDLCs or supercapacitors? What a great question, Doc. I have a chart that helps us out. Let's check it out. As you know, EDLCs can deliver a burst of current for a short time. This leaves you wanting a longer discharge time. On the other hand, a lithium ion battery will deliver a lower level of current for a longer period of time. Now you want more current for a longer time. What a mess. I always wanted to know why I couldn't have both on the same board mountain part. Until now, there was nothing. The SLB bridges the gap between batteries and EDLCs. It has the best characteristics of both. That was great. But as my pappy always told me when I was a little doc, prove it. Ha! I came prepared for that. This chart shows a column for the SLB and EDLC and a lithium ion battery. First, look at the voltage. The SLB goes up to 2.8 volts, which gives it an advantage over the EDLC. Second, Look at the energy density. With up to 40 watt hours per kilogram, it exceeds the EDLC by five times, almost six. Yeah, those are pretty nice advantages, but that was only over EDLC or supercapacitors. You said there were advantages over lithium ion batteries. What gives? Sure, we have some nice advantages over lithium ion batteries as well. Back to the chart, look at the power density. The SLB has almost three times the density of a regular lithium ion battery. And if you look at the temperature range, you will see that it has a lower operating temperature at minus 30 degrees Celsius. But the really great thing is that it can withstand 20,000 charge or discharge cycles. That's almost seven times more than a lithium ion battery. And finally, the SLB will not burn or rupture. Now, Professor. I know that standard lithium ion negative electrodes use lithium carbonate, which gives them a really thick SEI layer. So what makes this SLB so different? You make a great point, Doc. The SLB negative electrode uses a brand new lithium titanate or LTO technology. This gives the SLB a thin SEI layer as well as low electrolyte decomposition and low resistance. Okay, Professor. I have a couple more questions. Wait, 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 wait. I have something pretty cool to show you. One of the really cool things about the Nichicon SLB series is how it discharges like a battery. As you probably know, when the EDLC discharges, the voltage across it drops rather quickly, just like this chart shows. But wait, there's more. The SLB voltage stays relatively constant until it runs out of energy. Then the voltage drops off quickly. Here, let me show you this demonstration video. In this video, we charge both the EDLC and SLB for about 10 seconds. Then we switch over to the discharge mode. As you see, the EDLC on the right reacts just like the chart showed up and drops off pretty quickly.
the SOB stays up and then drops very quickly after the energy is discharged. Okay, PD, time for the lightning round. I'm gonna ask you some questions. You're gonna give us some quick answers. Bring it on, DC. After 20,000 cycles, what is the SLB's capacity? After 20,000 cycles, the SLB will retain 80% of its discharge capability. Please note, a lithium ion battery can only withstand a couple of hundred to 3,000 cycles before failing. How quickly can an SLB be cycled? The SLB can be charged or discharged at rates up to 20 times their capacities, or in other words, they can be discharged or charged in as few as three minutes. This is very similar to EDLCs. What happens to the SLB if I over discharge? Excess discharging the SLB down to zero volts will result in a decrease in the storage capacity after 1800 discharges at elevated temperatures. Okay then, what happens if the SLB is overcharged? Well, the storage capacity decreases by only 10% and it will take about 1,500 cycles to do, to do that. All right. Everybody knows that self-discharge is an issue. What about the SLB? Wait, I wanna take a little more time with this one. The SLB has at least three to five times the storage capability when compared to an EDLC, even above 25 degrees Celsius. Let's look at this chart. We are going to look primarily at the 25 degrees C for both. You can see the parts are fully charged. After 30 days, the EDLC voltage had dropped 27%, down to 1.97 volts DC. But after 40 days, the SLB had dropped only 5%, down to 2.66 volts. Early, you mentioned that something about a new negative electro material. Can you explain this new material? Sure. The standard lithium ion negative electrode uses lithium carbonate, but we are using a new material called lithium titanate. The advantages of LTO are, it has thermal stability that does not burn, low reactivity with electrolyte, meaning it has low heat generation, and the best part, it has low electron conductivity. What does that mean? That means that only a small amount of current will be generated when a short occurs between positive and negative electrodes, meaning it is safe and reliable. Let me show you another example video. I have heard it said that this video is impressively unimpressive or something like that. Okay, I have a few more questions for you. What does this thing look like and what sizes are available? Well, that's a really cool part. It works like a battery, but it looks like a capacitor. See right here? It is available in a three by seven case size that is rated at 0.35 milliamp hours. As of this taping, it has two other sizes available as well an 8 by 11.5 with a 14 milliamp hour rating and a 12.5 by 40 that is rated at 150 milliamp hours. Take note, when you compare an SLB with an EDLC, please be sure to use one milliamp hours equals 10 farad. Other applications are backup power supplies for computers, smart meters, or main power supplies for wearables, even a stylus pen like the Samsung S Pen, or in toys and even tools. There are many, many different potential applications for the SOB. Well, this is really an exciting new product from NicheCon, and I am sure you would like to get more information. NicheCon has set up a special website for you. It is listed here in the comments below. I want to thank Professor Disruptor for enlightening us on this new disruptive technology. And remember, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me by mail. Well, that's it for our 10th episode. Who'd have thunk it? Remember the name, Dr. Capacitor. <laughs>